Before we begin, let me open by saying how happy I am that people have not only stuck around, but also joined this little channel over the past month while I've been absent. It's really encouraging to see the numbers grow and people interact in the comments, so seriously, thanks to each and every one of you. One more thing. There's going to be frequent mentions of Japanese names throughout this video, and although I would love to go, I've never been to Japan, and as a man from the north of England, I'm likely to butcher pronunciations on this one, so fair warning and apologies in advance. Now, onto the topic of this video. For those of you that are familiar with the early titles in the Resident Evil franchise, you may remember that the base release was heavily censored and didn't feature any support for analog sticks. I mean, DualShock was a fancy new technology that was in its infancy, and not everyone who owned a PlayStation owned one of these new controllers. Anyway, as the popularity and accessibility of DualShock grew, and the 32-bit power of the PlayStation was maturing, Capcom shoved out two director's cuts of the first game. The initial director's cut added new game modes, a buffed version of the Beretta, and some new wardrobe items for key characters. And item placement had been changed around, to force experienced players to change up their established routes through the game. Now, in 1998, a second director's cut was released, which featured all of the above plus support for those shiny new DualShock controllers, but more widely remembered than any of these changes were the totally unnecessary alterations to the game's soundtrack. You see, the original game had been composed by three individuals, Makoto Tamazawa, Koichi Hiroki, and Masumi Ueda. However, there was a rising star in Japanese classical music named Mamoru Samurogachi, the game's original director, Shinji Mikami, having regretted not updating the soundtrack in the first director's cut gave the go-ahead for the team to incorporate compositions from none other than Mamoru Samaragachi. Unfortunately, this was a complete disaster, and when in the first game we had suspense building, ambient tones such as this, Samaragachi and the developers thought it was a good idea to use this. Just how did this game go from something widely praised for, amongst many things, its excellent sound design, to an atonal, flatulent mess that is now considered the worst piece of video game composition to ever grace our ears? Well, actually, it's a pretty bonkers story, so strap in. Mamoru Samurogachi was born in September 1963 in Hiroshima. His parents were both hibakusha, which is a term used to describe people who were irradiated when atomic bombs were dropped on Hiroshima in 1945. Apparently, Samuragochi was some sort of child prodigy, having started playing piano around the age of four. According to him, he started to experience intense migraines in high school, which began to affect his hearing. After leaving high school, Samuragochi claims to have developed a distaste for the way music students were taught to compose in universities, and made the decision to teach himself how to compose, rather than attend any school or acquire any formal training. He claims that by the time he was 35, the migraines had resulted in his complete loss of hearing, he had gone deaf. Samuragachi even went as far as to claim, in Time magazine, that losing his hearing was a literal gift from God. He made a name for himself in the world of composition, and despite his deafness, in 97 he landed a role scoring the soundtrack for the Junichi Suzuki film Cosmos. His fame grew, and due to his talent and deafness, the media dubbed him the Japanese Beethoven. Samuragachi's growing popularity as a composer, due in part to his talents, but also aided by his fascinating backstory and reports of his deafness led to him being offered numerous gigs. Around the same time, Capcom had already achieved incredible success with Resident Evil and were planning to release the second game, but not before reinvigorating thirst for the franchise by putting out another director's cut of the first game. As aforementioned, series director Shinji Mikami wanted to update the soundtrack and presumably it was Capcom who thought it would be great marketing to have Samuragachi produce some new slappers for the game. And to be fair, in some cases this is actually true. The Mansion First Floor track was genuinely more brooding than the original.
However, as with most things in life, people tend to remember the negatives far more than they remember the positives, and this means that Mansion Basement has now become literal meme fodder. The new director's cut was ridiculed for the choice of some of Samuragachi's compositions, and overall, the OG soundtrack was considered to be far superior. So what happened exactly? Well, to get a full picture of this, we need to skip forward a few years. In 2003, Samuragachi became hugely praised in classical music for his composition, Number no. 1 Symphony Hiroshima. Pretty nice, right? It even ended up being performed live in front of a meeting of the G8 in 2008. Now here's where things get really weird. In 2013, a documentary aired titled Melody of the Soul, The Composer Who Lost His Hearing. In this documentary, Samuragachi met with survivors of the 2011 Tohoku earthquake and tsunami, which resulted in the meltdown at a nuclear power plant in Fukushima. Close to 20,000 people lost their lives in this disaster. Around the same time as this documentary aired, a reporter for the magazine magazine era interviewed Samuragachi at his Yokohama apartment. The reporter noticed something off, however. Firstly, Samuragachi could answer questions before the sign language interpreter had even finished translating. Also, Samuragachi reacted to rings at his doorbell in exactly the same way a person of normal hearing would. The interview never got published because the reporter had serious doubts about Samuragachi's claims regarding his deafness. Also, another composer in Japan, Takeo Noguchi, noticed that Samuragachi's acclaimed first symphony was little more than an adaptation of some obscure compositions by musician Gustav Mahler. Gucci penned an article about his findings. However, he couldn't get it published because Samuragachi's record label was an advertising sponsor of many of the journals he submitted the article to. Eventually though, Noguchi found a journal willing to publish his findings, and these findings were published in an article titled The Deaf Genius Composer. Is Mamoru Samuragachi Genuine? Samuragachi's story was beginning to unravel. In 2014, after these initial controversies, it was revealed that everything attributed to Samuragachi since 96 had in fact been ghostwritten by another musician called Takashi Niyagaki. This would appear to include Samuragachi's soundtrack for the Resident Evil Director's Cut DualShock Edition. When all this went public, Niyagaki came forward with more revelations that Samuragachi was not actually deaf and instead perpetuated this story to generate allure and mystery around his life and image. Later that year, Samuragachi Samuragachi publicly admitted that whilst his hearing was impaired, it was not severe enough to meet the criteria for legal deafness, and he had returned his disability certificate. He went on to state that he was deeply ashamed of living a lie. So Samuragachi was publicly disgraced, end of story. Well, there is one more thing to add. Due to the memes generated by the infamous basement theme, Samuragachi wanted to set the record straight and released a now unavailable video of him at a MIDI keyboard playing the track with Niyagaki standing on applauding. That's right. Samuragachi was trying to reclaim credit for the worst composition in video game history because I suppose all money is good money or something. So there you have it. Anything positive about that notorious OST was written by a ghostwriter, and the meme composition that everybody remembers it for was probably written by a man who vastly overstated his talent and a disability. The story of the basement theme turns out to be much more interesting and complicated than merely a puzzling Capcom misstep, of which there are many. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and all that good stuff, and as always, thank you very much for watching. I've been DK Priori, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.